Hello, this is Addendum 2D, the Tom Domain Bounce Diagram, Chapter 2 about transmission lines, and it's a follow up to the discussion in the body of the chapter. Well, we are talking here about the bounce diagram, the Tom Domain, and as we have discussed in the chapter, the solution in the Tom Domain is simple in the uh, case of lossless line or approximation to a low loss line. However, if the line is lossy, things will be kind of complicated and to obtain a time domain solution is not that simple. So, we are going to confine our discussion here to lossless lines which have basically a pure resistive um, characteristic impedance and we will also confine ourselves to pure resistive discontinuities. So, everything here will be um, real and it's all uh, resistive both R sub 0, R sub L, R sub S and the voltage source here obviously is going to be a time domain thing. So no frequency domain stuff here. All right, It's all time domain. Now if we are thinking about a wave launched by the source that travels towards the load, bounces off the load if it is mismatched, comes back to the source and again if the source is mismatched it will bounce again and this will continue back and forth and so on and so forth okay here it is an incident wave will travel until it hits a discontinuity and then it will reflect there will be a transmitted component if we have a continuation to the line beyond the discontinuity in this simple case here we terminate the line here terminate the line there so there is no transmission here all right whatever is thought of as transmission is basically what goes to the load and gets absorbed there or what gets to the source and gets absorbed there. The reflection coefficient at the load end we are using here rho sub L is related to the mismatch between R sub L and R sub naught. Actually if you recall in the uh, body of the chapter the uh, frequency domain form of that was gamma sub L was equal to Z sub L minus Z naught divided by Z sub L plus Z naught. Now, for resistive situation, we are writing here the same expression, but all with resistances, all right? Likewise, at the source end, the reflection coefficient at the source end is going to be R sub S minus R naught, because the wave coming here sees that as a termination, and this will be the media itself. So, from the media to the termination, R sub S minus R naught divided by R sub S plus R naught. So, these are the two reflection coefficients. And that's how the wave is going to be modified. So if I have a wave of some intensity, it gets multiplied by that when it reflects back. And a wave coming this way with some uh, intensity will get multiplied by that reflection coefficient when it comes back. So I'm going to skip that part for now. And let's go and construct the balance diagram together. All right. So now let's see how that balance diagram, the time domain works. Okay. So here is our transmission line, here is our source end, and here is our load end, and the separation between the two is a distance L. The characteristic impedance or the characteristic resistance R sub 0, this one here is R sub L, R sub S, and we've seen the expression for the reflection coefficients on the previous page. So what we do is we are going to do a diagram here with this one here being the z-axis, all right? goes from 0 to L and this one here would be the time axis. So if I were to assume that there is a wave that is launched by the um, source initial wave A of T how is A of T related to Vs of T? We will talk about that later on. Actually that's the part that we skipped on the previous page. So that A of T is going to travel down the line and reaches the other end of the line here after some time delay, tau or tau, that's going to be A of T minus tau. The expression for tau obviously is going to be the length of the line L divided by the velocity of propagation C. All right, so that's the time it takes from going from here to there. 
So if I trace that on uh, my diagram here, so I have a straight line here with a certain slope that travels a distance L in a time two. So this one here, time here, is equal to two. Now that wave is going to hit this location here, mismatch, rho sub L reflection, so it comes back. Modified by rho sub L. Rho sub L times A of T minus 2. Here it is. Rho sub L of A of T minus 2. And that's going to travel this way. And it's going to take another two until it reaches here. So if I were to trace that line, it's going to take another two to reach that location. That means this distance here, or this time here, on this axis here, will be twice the time of one way travel, or twice two. All right? And how much is it going to be? Same exact intensity, no losses. Rho L A of T minus 2, this is going to be Rho L of A of T minus 2 tau. Right? Delayed by another tau. Hits this is continuity, reflects back again. Modify this time by Rho sub S, because that's the reflection coefficient here. So as you can see, here it is modified by rho sub s, same expression that we had above, rho l of a of t minus 2, modified by rho sub s. That's how much we're getting here now. And that goes here, another delay of 2, and gets another rho sub l reflection, comes back here, another 2 delay, and again, another rho sub s reflection, and so on and so forth. We can follow this uh, as it goes on back and forth. This is what we call the bounce diagram in the time domain. Now, let's see what we have here on the right side here and on the left side here and also in the middle. What we have on the right side here actually what reaches that resistance R sub L. R sub L is going to see the signal coming in and the signal reflected. So it's going to see the superposition of these two. This one plus that one. Remember, the transmission coefficient, we talked about that in the chapter, is equal to the incidence plus reflected. In the frequency minute it was 1 plus gamma, and we had 1 plus gamma here. Here is going to be 8, obviously, A plus rho sub L times A. Here is going to be A plus rho sub L times A. So it's 1 plus rho sub L times A of T minus 2, which is the timing at this location here. At this point here, we are going to see again instant plus reflected rho sub s rho l a of t minus 3 tau. This one rho sub s rho l squared a of t minus 3 tau. So it's going to be 1 plus rho sub l rho sub s a of t minus 3 tau. At the source end, again, we are going to see the sum of instant plus reflected, instant plus reflected. Again, instant plus reflected. Instant plus reflected. That's what we have here. What we have written here in the middle is what happens somewhere at a general location here. Let's say at some arbitrary location here, some z. The delay from here to there is going to be related to that distance only, not the whole L. Obviously, it's going to be just z. So, the timing here is going to be tau sub z. Or the delay here is going to be tau sub z. Where tau sub z is equal to z over c.
the delay coming back is going to be related to the resistance D. Remember, this is D. So, tau sub D is equal to D over C. So, if you watch A of T here, what you are going to get here is A of T minus tau sub Z. Here it is. And if you look at the signal coming back, A of T minus tau is going to be A of T minus tau minus tau sub D, because that's a delay from here to there, and so on and so forth. This one here will be delayed by additional tau sub Z here, and this one here will be further delayed by additional tau sub D there. So actually you can see all the signal intensities here at those locations here. Obviously, the timing of that location is right there. The timing of this location here. Remember, this is the time axis right here. So the timing of this location is going to be right there. The timing at this location will be at this point. These are the times, the corresponding times to those signals here. Now, in the tabulation here, we are summarizing this whole story. What reaches Z sub S at the source end is A of T to start with. Let me highlight that in yellow. A of T. Here it is. And then you have 1 plus rho sub S rho sub L A of T minus 2 ta. Here it is. And then you have this one here. Here it is. Obviously I'm writing additional terms here because that's going to go on forever. On the other side, let's highlight that in a different color. So what do we see at rho sub L here or Z sub L? We see the first one is 1 plus rho sub L times that. 1 plus rho sub L times that. And the second one is right there. And the third one and the fourth one and so on and so forth. Now, if I want to see what goes on at the location Z, here's the location Z. I'm going to see waves to the right, plus Z waves, and negative Z waves. The first plus Z waves right there. Here it is. The second plus Z waves right there. Here it is. The third plus Z waves right there. Here it is. And then I have the negative Z waves. We we'll start with this one. And then the second one, we can write it there. You may think it's confusing, but if you go over a couple of times, all right, you will find it very straightforward, really. You know, just a, a little bit of bookkeeping, and you just have to be careful in writing the expressions and take your time and check it out. So we can construct this table, we can construct the bounds diagram, and in the next page, we're going to see. A practical example with numbers. All right. Here's my transmission line. I chose the uh, V S of T as a step function U of T. I chose my line to be a 75 ohm line, terminating 125 ohm resistance, with the source resistance being 50 ohms. And the line length is 15 centimeters. Again, let's skip that part for now. The speed of light is going to be 1.5 10, 10 to the 8, which is half of the speed of light in free space. Rho sub S, here it is, minus 0.2. Rho sub L, here it is, plus 0.25. 
and the time delay the full length is going to be one nanosecond based on the length and the speed so it takes one nanosecond from here to there so each one of those is one nanosecond so as you can see here's one nanosecond this one here is going to correspond to two nanoseconds four nanoseconds and so on this one is going to be three nanoseconds So we'll start with A of T, we reach here. This is going to be rho sub L. Rho sub L is how much? Rho sub L is 0.25. So that's quarter of what we had over here. So the instant here, 25% comes back. And the same 25% arrives here. When we get that 25% here, it's going to hit minus 0.2. That's negative 20% here. That's negative 20% reflecting back. So that's negative 20% times the 25%. So that's the total would be negative 5%. That negative 5% comes here, hits that 25% of the negative 5%. There's going to be a negative here, comes here, gets another negative, so it becomes positive, and so on and so forth. You do all the numbers, and this is what you get. So that's going to be a good exercise for you to practice and see if you can arrive at the same shape that we have here in this diagram. And here is the uh, source end expression and the load end expression. So I want to get back to how did we figure out A of T from Vs of T. And that requires that we go back to the first page. Remember we skipped that part right here. To figure out how much A of T you get out of your source, it's actually the amount of voltage you get across the input side of the transmission line at T is equal to zero. At T is equal to zero, when the wave is launched here, it doesn't see the end of the line. So the rest of the line here looks like it's not there, like infinite line. So as far as we are concerned, the driving point impedance, if you wish, if you want to use the term, which is not exactly a good expression to use in time domain, but the input resistance here, that's more appropriate, is equal to that of the transmission line itself. It's an infinite line. We don't see the end of the line here. The wave is still young, just came out of the source, sees a transmission line, and it doesn't recognize anything else beyond that. So basically, that would be like your equivalent circuit here. Your R input is basically equal to R sub 0, and you have a voltage divider here between R sub S and R sub 0. So the V of 0 at T is equal to 0 is equal to Vs times R0 divided by Rs plus R0. And that's actually your A of T. And here it is. Your V of S times R sub 0 divided by R sub S plus R sub 0. So if I go back to this expression here, my A of T is basically V of S times R sub 0 divided by R sub S plus R sub 0. If I go back to this expression, here it is. That was a U of T. So the A of T was U of T times 75 ohms. That's R sub 0 divided by 75 plus 50, which is the R sub S. Okay, we're going to stop here. And basically, we got the concept across and like I said it's a good idea for you to sit down and redo this example here use those numbers and see if you can construct and arrive at the same exact numbers that are displayed here in this diagram we'll see you in another video